You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Welcome back to Force Perspectives for the uh, sixth episode of Ahsoka Far, Far Away. I am one of your hosts, Michael Cohen, and with me, as always, the illustrious Joe Hogan. Michael, Mm -hmm. I don't know what I did in a previous life (laughs) to deserve to exist during this era of Star Wars, but I'm very happy I did it. I... Yeah, dude, like, okay, so we were just talking like literally seconds before hitting record. I had to get all of my expletives out because this episode <laughs> is so good. Um, Coming off of last week, Clone Wars flashbacks slash, you know, uh, uh, Dagobah cave mashup type stuff going on. Hayden Christensen in the entire episode, right? Uh, as, 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 as I mentioned in, in the previous one the all of the the stuff uh uh with uh with jason Sindula and the Kanan jars connection and like the depth of that and how much that means to me so like last week one of the best hours of star wars we've gotten full stop right mm-hmm. and and at the end of that episode we said to each other <laughs> how are they gonna how, like i don't understand where do you go from here how do you top this and we're coming into this one going like, okay, so it's like maybe we're going to get to see Thrawn at the very end of the episode. And then like, you know, Ezra is going to be safe for like the season finale, right? We're not going to see Ezra. And then right off the bat, they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're here. We're here. Look, I, I, the ring around this planet is made of ding, dang space whale bones. It's an elephant graveyard in space, dude. Like what? genius sorcery nonsense like who what deal did dave filoni make with what demon or (laughs) devil in order to like just nailed it because like we get there and we discover that this is like this is the like the origin planet of the night sisters so like we're here we're thinking that they come from dathomir they don't come from dathomir they went to dathomir yeah and what better what better setting than this like desolate like just bleak i i it's 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 very like um sort of like irish scottish like moors kind of vibe to it right so it's got Mm. that like uh, the Macbeth vibes are so strong they're so strong that it, it again These things that I'm like, okay, like, look at this, like, look at, look at how strong this is. Look at how strong this, I, I, this correlation is, it's like, this is not coincidence. This is not coincidence. Right. Um, yeah. Like that Macbeth stuff. And like Balin, I have felt for like the, like, like I kind of, I kind of hit this like last week. I didn't, not on the podcast, but just like, I was just thinking about his character and I was like, dude is like very Macbeth like. And, and and, cause he's like, he's made a deal with a, with a witch in order to get power and like, like, and, and just like Ray Stevenson and like the, the visual of him is like what you would sort of picture Macbeth as, especially Mm -hmm. if you watched Gargoyles. Uh, (laughs) But I, like this week, it, like it leans even more into that, that like his quest is for power, but it's like he he seems to be a good man, but a good man that's been corrupted by. By I OK, listen, OK, it's Macbeth, it's it's Shakespeare, it's a long time ago, an evil woman. Um, <laughs> so I don't want to be misogynistic, but I'm just trying to 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 draw the the, the correlations like there because there's like the witches and stuff. But then I think that like in, in this Macbeth metaphor um that morgan is is more like Macbeth's wife right like mm-hmm. like that that's sort of like pushing him to do these things sure um 
so it's, it's not a direct one to one, obviously, right? But just like sort of looking at it and going like, okay, where are the corollaries between these two stories, right? But just like so much, of, it's like it's like this can't be coincidence. This has to be intentional. This has to be something that, and then like the setting of all of it, it's just like it's all felt so like like it's it just feels very shakespeare macbeth all of the settings that we've been to except for coruscant like everywhere else that we've been has had these vibes when i sort of look back at the series um it's it's just incredible it's so good but like this world being encircled by the bones of purgle is just like it's like it's literally surrounded by death like what better like it's it's like in Star Wars, we're used to like with planets, it's like, OK, like back in the day. Right. It's like, well, this one's the desert planet. This one's the ice planet. This one's the forest moon. Right. Like they all have they're a single biome. Right. But then as Star Wars gets bigger, it sort of gets more complex and things kind of switch up a little bit. And those ideas get a little bit more like you kind of you run out of biomes eventually. Right. We've done a jungle sure, planet. Yeah, we've done this. We've done that. Right. Um, and so Dave's just sitting there going like, what, what does death planet look like? What does a dead (laughs) planet look like? And, and, and tying the purple into it, just being like, this is like, this is where they go. Like that when they, when they migrate, like, like an elephant graveyard, right? Like they all go to the same place and like basically lay down and die, but they're space whales. So it's in outer space. So it just creates a ring around the planet, like just unbelievable visual just so cool and i've skipped over already uh what is possibly one of the best parts of an incredible episode where hu yang i i (laughs) tells ahsoka they're inside the whale right and it's like oh like uh, the the uh, what is it like history of the galaxy parts one two and three mm. and then ahsoka goes with part one being the best of course and everybody <laughs> everybody on the internet is debating this i want to know joe what do you think she means when she says part one is the best of course i i think it means the prequel trilogy yeah. but uh i'm gonna lean into it and say she thinks phantom menace is the best i don't care <laughs> because I, the the yeah. history of the galaxy would be the prequels right what came before so that's that's how i'm i like to look at it like oh okay so the actual history the ot is the now the st is later yeah. the prequels are are the history stuff um so for me it's it's phantom menace but i i think it's it's like a little wink and a nod to the prequels I think so too. I think I I think because she is a prequel character and because of the Clone Wars and all mm. of that stuff that I think yeah, that that's what sure. Dave's getting at. But like yeah. I love the people who are trying to like justify that it's a New Hope, right? They're like <laughs> it's like no, no, yeah. no, because the New Hope is part four. It's right. part four. Like yeah, if 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 Dave wanted to be on the nose about it, but I think like the thing about Dave is that like this is this is a troll, right? He's not actually saying oh, definitively man. anything. <laughs> He's he is, a troll, man. he is literally just messing with, with the fans, right? He just yeah. wants us to talk about it. So like mission accomplished. I, uh, yeah, I sent, I sent you that, uh, that tweet last night, which I, I thought was <laughs> yeah. fantastic of Dave at celebration. I, it was not <clears throat> this last one. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't Anaheim. It was, it was, uh, Chicago. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Because because it was uh, D Gutierrez, right? And she was she wasn't at the last one, yeah. um. So so it would have been the one before. So it would have been when he was writing Ahsoka, and he like okay, so every, he knew already. Yeah. yeah, they they asked. Uh, I don't know if it was the audience because it kind of it's it's just a little clip, right? So I don't know if if D or the the audience asked, but I uh, I uh, uh, I said D Andy Gutierrez. Uh, but anyways, I. She, I don't know if she asked her if the audience asked, but somebody asked, where's Ezra? They want to know where's Ezra, right? And he said, do you want to know? Do you want to know? And then he just goes, I'll tell you, far, far away. And it's just <laughs> like, man, he like, because like, we didn't even know. Everybody just, everybody just cheered. And it's like, no, he was giving you the answer. But he does that all the time, all mm. the time. Where he like he, you ask him direct questions at cons, and he 
gives what seems at the time like a cryptic answer and then when we find out what he was talking about it's like oh he told us like that like like he just he is such a like it's a very he's very like Qui-Gon slash Yoda in that way right where it's like it's like no I told you the answer to the question that you asked but it just you 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 don't understand the context of the answer and I just I love him I love him so much Joseph, I love the man. David Felonius, he is uh he is I don't know, man. It's hard I, not to. I it is it's always this thing cuz I'd never want to feed into like the 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 part of the fandom and I don't think that I yeah, do cuz I don't the think that they're type. listening to this. Yeah. But like the the misogynistic like fire Kathleen Kennedy put Dave Filoni in charge yeah. of everything blah blah blah. It's like Dave does no wrong and it's like well that's not true at all i think that dave has had some missteps in storytelling i think like there's definitely stuff that i haven't enjoyed over the years but i think as a like in general like like as we talked about on the last episode like like the dude gets it he gets yeah. it he is he is like the heir to george's legacy yeah, for sure that doesn't mean that he should be president of the company right, right. The, the very different things because a good storyteller does not make a good business person, right? Like that's these are these are completely wildly different things. Um, and Kathleen Kennedy is a uh, Kathleen Kennedy is. I'm just gonna go ahead and say like the best producer who's ever done the job. Like like I it just I don't know if you could find me someone better. Raiders of the Lost Ark is the first thing that she ever worked on, and she, she was Steven Spielberg's assistant on that and and did such a good job as his assistant that she was a producer on his next movie right Mm -hmm. like like that's a that's that's ridiculous like that's insane and then from there it's like you know like everything that steven spielberg's ever done pretty much i i all of the star wars stuff i mean like just the list her 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 credentials as as a producer she's responsible for everything from like the mid 80s I guess from even from the early eighties with Raiders being uh, 81. Right. But yeah. I, yeah. I like from the early eighties through the nineties that we nerds have like crafted our entire identities around. Right. Like that, like Lord of the Rings is like the one thing that she's not involved with. <laughs> right. But I'm sure that if, you know, you ask Peter Jackson, have you ever had any interactions with Kathleen Kennedy? He would be, he would randomly tell you a story about how they met at something. And she was like, you know what you should do? Make the Hobbit small. And then it was like, yep, yeah, that, that unlocks the whole thing. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure that, that, that somehow she like affected even that um, every, everything that we've ever loved. But anyways, um, I, we get it. So you like Kathleen Kennedy, <laughs> yeah? But like, but, but also, but like Dave Filoni as 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 a as a storyteller is like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't, I, I just don't know that anybody else is doing as good of a job with Star Wars as he is, right? Like, and and like I'll say, like Obi Wan Kenobi, I think that that Deborah Chow like knocked it out of the park with that story. Like, I I think mm-hmm. that that show is 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 perfect in almost every single way. Like I wouldn't change a thing about it. I know that some people have a, have problems with like the scale of it and they want it like, you know, sort of like a, like a, um, they just want it, I think more like special effectsy type stuff. Um, but, but I love that. It's a very personal, like very tight, s- small story about mm-hmm. Obi-Wan and, and Leia and, and, uh, uh, and Reva and, and, and whatnot. Right. But, but, um, yeah, and, and like it just as good as Andor is, we talk about this all the time. As good as it is, it's just like it's just no fun. It's just no fun. <laughs> it's a it is it is entertaining and captivating and sure. and um like like awe inspiring and and like just a, like a real masterpiece of filmmaking. I think, but it, but it's just no fun. <laughs> like it's just there's very little to be joyful about when watching Andor, um, which is the point it's the point but it's just not what i personally want from star wars right Mm. um but then with this show dude with this show it is just all of those things we talked about it a couple weeks ago right like all of the levers that you need to pull in order to make a good star war they are it's all of them all of them i mean like dude the howlers are 
now like instant Star Wars classic. They are like now there's now a lizard dog that like a lizard wolf that you can ride in Star Wars. That's a thing. Yeah. And it's perfect. It's perfect. Horse, horse puppy lizard wolf. Yeah. I He's just like I, man, I I don't know. Like I'm like I just again like last week. Like I'm at a loss. Like it's it's difficult to get across just how much this show is nailing it. Because mm. again, like I said last week, so much of it is a feeling. So much of it is just like it. It's 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 very very difficult to quantify it. But it is. <clears throat> Like it's it, but it's there. Like it is tangible. You can mm. reach out and touch it, but but it's still it's difficult to put into words. I think like just exactly what it is about about this that's that's so perfect. But like these characters are just they are they are exactly the characters that they were in Star Wars Rebels. Like they are exactly the characters yeah. that have it's like progressed eerie. along their <laughs> stories, right? It is like eerie. it's like Sabine's not in the same place that she was, but the way that she deals with situations and the way that she talks and 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 re- I'm Dude, like it is in, inflections in her like voice and mm-hmm. just the the like it was like bizarre, like it's and surreal how just like it literally felt like the rebels 3d models grew up a few years and yeah. now are, Oh yeah. They're just alive. They're just real people. Now they're not, they're yeah. not in a computer anymore. It's like, what the hell are we witnessing right now? It was awesome. Yeah. I mean, like, I, uh, I, um, Ezra is, so pitch perfect yeah i i i I am i am flabbergasted that he showed up this early and that we're gonna get to spend two episodes with him um and that we are going to most likely get to see him reunited with ahsoka as well right um it's just like like but his voice before we ever see his face right his voice it was just like that's Ezra that's Ezra mm-hmm. there's no question that that's Ezra right uh, and everything like all of the dialogue everything that he says and just like that really like this is here's the piece where I'll say like this is exact like this is just Star Wars Rebels season five when he says like it worked though didn't it right like he, yeah. when he says that whatever the line is exactly that but like when he says yeah. that it, did it is work, right yeah it is so bittersweet because you're like it yeah it did work it did work like like you removed thrawn from the board which was the only way that the rebels were going to defeat the empire if thrawn was there it 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 may not have happened right mm-hmm. um it it would have it would have been a much different fight right thrawn had to be removed in order for everything else to play out the way that it does. Right. And for, for Luke to, to bring back Anakin and Anakin to defeat Palpatine. Right. All of that, all of that has to be in place because if, if Thrawn is there at the battle of Endor, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it goes the way that it goes. (laughs) Right. Um, Advising Palpatine and all of that stuff. Right. If, I mean, like, even if like the tie defenders were a part of that battle, it goes a different way. Right. Yeah. Um, so without Thrawn, that all falls apart. So yeah, you did it. But now like the galaxy's not in a great spot, even though like, like, yeah, you guys won the war. So there's that part of it, but it's like, but, but it's, we know because of Mando, it's like, but it's really not that different. The same people are still in power. It's just that Palpatine's not at the top really like at the end of the day like the same stuff is happening to the people like like if 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 we want to talk about like like what Ezra is all about which is protecting those who can't protect themselves right um Lothal is doing fine but but like when we look at at Tatooine it's not really flourishing right like there's problems yeah. there 
Boba's trying to sort that out, but like there's there's issues that like the pikes are 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 running rampant, like like the like pirates and and syndicates and stuff like that have have basically taken over the galaxy and filled in the power vacuum that the Empire left. The Empire isn't actually gone. It's just operating from the shadows and we know that that's building like we know as an audience that like it's actually all kind of for naught because what Balin is saying which is beautiful that it's in the same episode right to remind us is that like the cycle just keeps perpetuating right and something has to happen in order to end the cycle um which is Dave putting that in there in the same way that he, they're writing that stuff into the Clone Wars to justify everything that happens in Revenge of the Sith in order to make the prequels stronger. It's like he is he is retroactively making the the sequel trilogy stronger, which is not like a dig at the sequels. This is what we do with Star Wars, right? It's like you tell the story and the story is missing pieces. And then you go back and you tell more stories and then you fill in more pieces. George did that from empire forward right like he he retconned he added he just changed everything so uh, constantly and like to the point of like wild inconsistencies like like obi-wan suddenly being like you know you're gonna go learn from the jedi master who instructed me yoda and then uh later on we find out that like well that's kind of like a weird half truth that obi-wan's telling because it's like yoda kind of instructed everybody but mm. um yeah, like like George has always he's just always done that stuff. So it it makes sense that that Dave uses these stories to bolster the other stories. That's what Star Wars does, right? Like that's the whole point of it. And making the galaxy broader and and deeper and 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 uh and and filling it with with more, right? Um which then makes us go back to those other movies and go like, "Okay, okay, new context, new understanding and all of that stuff." But um but but even like in more in the present of this story sabine having come there to rescue him by opening the cage right that uh ezra ezra caged himself with the tiger right mm-hmm. and but in order to get ezra out the tiger also uh can escape so that's the situation that we're in right and it's just like yeah, it's like it's bittersweet is the best way that I can put it, which is exactly how Rebels sort of goes, right? Like by the end of it, it's like like the this family comes together, they they grow and they develop uh, and 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 we like grow with them and 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 form all of these attachments to these characters. And then Kanan sacrifices himself to protect everybody and then uh, and then and then Ezra sacrifices himself to protect the <laughs> entire galaxy and um it's just like that whole show was was bittersweet because you get to the end and you're like what an ending but like but where's Ezra <laughs> right yeah. um and it's like oh okay here's Ezra this is Dave this is Dave to a T right like here's Ezra it's what you guys wanted right you guys wanted Ezra <laughs> here's Ezra and it's like, yeah, but what does this mean for everybody else? So, um, yeah, man. Uh, so that's the Ezra and Sabine of everything. I, uh, do you have anything to say about any of that? Oh, where to, where to begin? Um, well, yeah, first of all, uh, last week, my attitude was, was like, I don't care about anybody, but Ahsoka, this was such a great Ahsoka episode focusing on mm-hmm. her and all, all, all that stuff. And, and Dave is just like, hold my beer. <laughs> go <laughs> yeah. to, let's go see everybody else. And you're going to love what everybody else is doing. And you're going to be completely fascinated with everybody else's story. Um, I, I didn't care at all when I was assuming, yeah, well, maybe we'll see Thrawn at the end of like, I don't know, episode seven or something like that's fine. And then we got him, and it was like the coolest possible yeah. intro, the, like you could possibly give this character. Then, before that, it's like, oh yeah, you you love Clone Wars, huh? Here are some Night Sisters who are getting that extra bit of lore, like you mentioned. Like, oh, now you have new context about the Night Sisters, and you know, Dave has said before that 
the Night Sisters are not that different from the Jedi. The black magic that the Night Sisters use is the same type of connection to the Force. It just manifests differently. Like they have an understanding of the Force, but they just look at it in a way, a different way than a Jedi or a Sith would. Um, so now to find out that, oh, so they have a connection to the Force. They're just from another galaxy. And that makes so much sense that their like total understanding of the Force is so radically different from what the Jedi of, you know, a quote unquote, our galaxy would, uh, how they would connect to it and their understanding of it. So that's really amazing. And I just, I don't know what it is. I love the fact that they're from a different galaxy. It's so weird. And Night Sisters are weird. And they're like, they're just, it's, it's hard to, to, I mean, what's not hard to articulate for me, but like, it's hard to articulate how like sometimes when you see something that's really strange and even maybe like off-putting, but it's just so radically different from what you're used to. It's so outside of your understanding and your comfort zone, but you're fascinated by it. That's kind of always been my thing with Night Sisters. I've always like felt like, oh, they're so mm. strange. And I'm like, like weirdly drawn to them, even though I would never want to like live there and be like, I'd be like, yeah, this is a yeah. little intense for me. <laughs> um, but like, I, I've always been very intrigued by them. And I love that we got more of them in a way that I was never expecting. And like, they were it, it, last week, we got that, you know, Siege of Mandalore stuff and live action and the battle on of Ryloth and live action. And it's like, oh, cool. It, it's neat to see yeah. that stuff. But to see Night Sisters, who were almost this like other side of the coin from Clone Wars of of what Clone Wars was about, was yeah, like it had no business working as well as it did. You know what I mean? Like that the the entire you know I'm sure a lot of that played into the atmosphere and this this new setting of this new planet and like you know both of these galaxies that we're dealing with in the show are so different from ours that like, they're going to feel like alien no matter what. But even this place felt alien for star Wars. And it's, it's like, it's oh, man, it's so good. It's, it's so good, man. And I'm so, having a hard time yeah. not delivering uh, expletives right now because of how like into this. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, yeah, go I, ahead. I, I, yeah. I was going to say, um, there's a tone and I, uh, and the way, like just sort of the way that it was shot, the cinematography of it, the, the lighting, yeah. um, it looks like Willow, like the movie. Willow. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah and, yeah, and that. the, and the howlers are reminiscent of the, the death dogs, right? Like, yeah. like, yeah. which, which were dogs in like big rat costumes, basically. Right. Like sort of dog rat things like these hybrids, but it, like right from the get go, when we got to this planet, like I started to get that vibe. Um, and I, again, these are things that like, I, this is intentional. Like, like Dave knows what he's doing. And I think that, um, and I think that there was like, sort of a, if there's look, we're going to a planet that's and it, in a different galaxy. That is a more of a fantasy setting than a science fiction setting, right? Like these, the night sisters didn't get across the galaxies with a starship. They did it with the Perkles. They say that, that like the, that the night sisters used to ride them, right? That like, and, and that's how they got to Dathomir is that mm. they rode the Perkles there. And then, uh, and then I guess they started riding Rancors once they were there. Right. Like, um, which is such a night sister thing to do. And you're like, yep, that makes perfect sense. Um, if we're in this f more of a fantasy setting, how do you do George Lucas fantasy? Well, guess what? There's already a template, right? And so the, the whole color palette, the whole, like, like the road, right? Like if you think of, if you think of Willow of, of that movie and like, there's a, there's a large portion of that movie that is very sort of just like walking along a dirt road right yeah, and sure. that's a lot of what sabine is doing in this and it just there there's just there are just, just these sort of like visual cues and 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 like i said like a tone that to me i watch it and i go like there's a lot of willow here there's a lot mm. a lot and in the context of lucasfilm as a whole i think um i think looking at this and going like okay 
So the the uh, uh, oh man, what's the planet Anduin? I think I uh, the planet that or the world that Willow exists in. Maybe it's in this galaxy. Maybe the Night Sisters come from crazy. that galaxy, right? <laughs> That'd like be mental. It would it would make perfect sense, right? Of like in the way that George tells stories of like you know yeah so it, the one galaxy is the star wars galaxy one galaxy is ours right and one galaxy is is the galaxy that willow comes from but like it doesn't matter in willow there's no context in willow because it only ever we only ever spend time on that planet right but but yeah which all goes back into that april fool's joke from a million years ago when they put the planet onto the the data bank right um <laughs> but i yeah, like I like there were a couple of times in this episode where I was like, there's some serious Willow vibes going <laughs> on here. Um, and yeah, and the howlers are like, like, like the number one thing to me where I'm like, this is so Willow. So I, I am interested to see, you know, if that continues. But yeah, um, but the Night Sister stuff, like it just. Yeah, I don't I don't know that any of us ever expected to get this in live no. action no um I, I thought the best we were gonna get in terms of night sisters was morgan yeah it's like oh yeah she's 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 kind of what you would imagine a live action night sister might look like okay it's it's a little more grounded in reality i was a little disappointed but i still thought it was cool that she was like tied to them um and then like no no here here's three not Mother Talzin who look like Mother Talzin and sound like yep. Mother Talzin and have the yep. the weird reverb in, oh, in their dude, voice. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was so good. The I'm implication so The implication that the three of them being great mothers are as powerful as Mother Talzin. Yeah. Right? Like because like even once she was killed, she didn't die. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like like it, it took a lot, I think. Yeah, the, it took a lot to put that villain down, right? Um, the three of them together, and it's like, uh, and and I think that they're named after the the Greek fates, um, which which is which is uh, appropriate, and again, um, a, a tying into into more sort of Shakespearean style storytelling because. <laughs> Uh, uh, old, old Billy Shakes loved that stuff too. So Billy Shakes, yeah. I, I, I've never, I've never nerded out about Shakespeare with you, have I? Like that's a, that's no. A, this is new territory for yeah. me. Yeah, oh, I did not I'm know just, you were a big Shakespearean. Oh, I'm fan. such a Shakespeare nerd. Okay. Dude. It's not even funny. Um, the people who listen to Thunder Quack know because Amanda is also a Shakespeare. That's how we met. Was at a Shakespeare thing. So, well, in any case, oh really. Uh, yeah <laughs> yeah crazy. uh in high school yeah um i but yeah like it just like th- <laughs> getting to see them like full on and like they're getting their origin story i did not i had if you had told me like what's the wildest thing that you could expect from ahsoka right it's like last week we got the clone wars flashbacks i never thought we were ever gonna get that stuff i never thought i did i held out hope on that one man but i was also expecting that in kenobi i was not expecting it in ahsoka um and i mean like we got we got our flashback in kenobi we just didn't get clone wars right right? we got right we got a different type but um man do you you see the behind the scenes stuff with hayden the reason why it looked so good is that they didn't do very much de-age like i don't think they did anything digital I th- well, the I think lighting they is so did dark. Most... It's it's easier to kind of hide that stuff when, yeah. when the lighting isn't like because like that flashback in Kenobi is broad daylight. It's like oh yeah okay you're gonna see every last wrinkle in this man's yeah. face. So um and they tried really hard with the makeup in that one, um yeah. and they were t- they were trying to make him significantly younger in that right yeah, like that's sure. like pre Attack of the Clones so it's like oh you're trying to get you're trying to get a, a an old man's face back to a baby face it's not gonna happen. But because, uh, oh, my God, he was so baby. He was so baby <laughs> in Attack of the Clones. But, uh, I, but I, just, yeah, like... I just watched a Goosebumps episode with him. That he was in. <laughs> oh, man, he was actual baby. Like he was had to be a, like 13, 14 years old. It was yeah. very funny. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, I, I but getting the Night Sisters is like I it's not even something that would have occurred to me. 
right? Even yeah. even once all of the Night Sister stuff was introduced earlier this yeah, season, I didn't exactly. I didn't for a second think because people were going like this is this is why I say to everybody when these shows are happening, can you please reserve some of your judgy yeah. bad attitude for after the season is done? Because they're going like that doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't even this hinge thing, and then it's like, well, it just knows where it's going. Why? And it's like, could you just hold off <laughs> two goddamn weeks to find out? Because Ooh, guess what? There's a <laughs> well, I goddamn, it's not that bad. I, I, I'm not gonna bleep that. I, yeah, like just like just wait, just wait. It's go like the show is literally going to tell you in two episodes yeah. exactly why there's a map that points directly to this other planet. And it's because it's the point of origin. This is like it's literally a navigator, like it's a sextant for space, right? Like it's just literally telling you exactly where to go, how to get from here to there, right? Um so like I, I it, it we should have known. Let, let me but quickly anyway. interject yeah. and ask you something. Why do you think people are so impatient with storytelling now? Do you think it's because like we're in this age of instant gratification and you get all the the answers are always at your fingertips and it's like ruined like long form storytelling or at least not ruined it because it's obviously amazing in in mm-hmm execution but like people's enjoyment of it are just so like the fuse is so short now i feel like yeah i think i think it's two things right i think that binge binge culture Mm. not just in terms of like netflix and that sort of thing but just like binge culture in general of like like you're saying we have everything at our fingertips it's accessible um so people people want they want it now they just have very little patience i think the other part of it is that we don't I don't think that we have a full understanding of what media literacy is in in this day and age. I think that we're we're currently trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And so there isn't education about how to engage with this stuff. I think we're so, like we are we are just barely over the cusp of film and television having moved from the space that it occupied in like the eighties and nineties. And before that as like escapist populist, like this is, this is just like junk food for your brain. Right. And we've moved in, in, in the, in the like 2010s and, and now in, in the 2020s into this thought process of like, no, 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 there is like, there is legitimate great storytelling going on in these mediums. There always has been, and it's worthwhile, right? So we like we live in that space now, but but I don't think that education has caught up to that. Mm-hmm. So we still treat books as if they're the most important thing, right? But like the funny thing is that like books when like when like book publishing became a thing, right? I mean, initially publishing books, uh, like the printing press was was invented to make copies of the bible right so that you could convert more people to christianity but when it when that was then turned towards pulp right i and and you know like like i escapist storytelling (laughs) books were considered like disgusting right it's like oh like you're reading that trash right like those like those sayings come from back then right um and then eventually, like literature becomes literature, right? I, I, and I, and and then we look at you know, like radio is like oh, like this this garbage. And now we would look at radio and go like these radio dramas are so like it's so interesting. Those are like people used to just sit around and listen to this, and it's like yeah, for entertainment, guys. Like it wasn't like a it wasn't like a high society thing. It was like a very again a very populous thing, and then it turns into TV. And I mean, like I, I have this fight about comic books constantly, right? Like I oh, think yeah. that I think that comic books should be part of the curriculum, right? Like I like I think that in in middle school you should be learning a lot about literature through comic books because there are some excellent pieces of literature that just happen to be sequential art 
That's it. Mm. They just happen to fit into that, right? Um, I mean, like something that you could that you, I mean, like you couldn't now because everybody would be like, but what about what about? But we have to represent both sides. Um, but but the the comic book mouse, right, is a great example of something like you give that to an eighth grader. And then you discuss like like let's talk about World War Two. Let's talk about the Nazis, um, which you can't you can't do now because now you have to be uh, tolerant of Nazis. So yeah. you can't you, you it would it would it would be banned, right? But um, anyways, uh, I think Mouse is already one, like on one of the things that's on the list of like banned from yeah, schools. which is absurd, uh, completely absurd because it's because it is absolutely a great piece of literature for discussing things right for just like for getting it if it's a it's a perfect piece of allegory to talk about what happened during world war ii and the nazis and genocide and you know to hopefully avoid that recurring in the future but whatever um that's the reason why they banned those books um but i i but now but now like I think that film and TV have absolutely like moved into that zone of, of, you know, um, important media, important, culturally significant media. Right. But we don't teach kids how to engage with it. Right. Mm. So you look at something like this that is long form storytelling. I mean, like Star Wars is the best example of long form storytelling. It's been 40 plus years <laughs> of stories, right? I mean, like we are coming up very quickly. It's 2023. We're coming up with 40 years on, on the 50th anniversary. That's insane. Right? Like that also makes I, me feel old. Not that we've been around that long, but still, no, I remember still, even as yeah. a kid, it felt like Star Wars was around forever. Yeah. Um, I mean, like the first VHS releases were the 10th anniversary, right? So, like, that's that. Oh, really? I did not know. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, I I think that that was the first time that it was all released on on VHS because 87. But um, I, yeah, like like this is a story that's been unfolding over the course of almost 50 years, mm-hmm. um, across different mediums and in 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 different ways and different different methodologies and all that sort of thing. So it's like looking at star Wars and going like, how do you, how do you engage with, with this type of storytelling? But like going back to your point of like, people can't wait two weeks. Right. I I do think that a big part of that is the binge stuff, but, but, but a bigger part of that is just like, there's a component that people need things spelled out for them. They want it to be explicit. They don't want to have to do, any digging um and honestly i think that's why podcasts after shows like this one exist right because you and i want to dig in you and i want to go like like we want to do this work it's actually like this is kind of the whole point is that we watch star wars and read star wars books and comics and play the video games so that we can experience the stories and then turn around to our friends and go like so what did you think of that yeah. right and then yeah. we do that work but there are a lot of people who literally do not want to do that work i mean like so i'm um, pull back the curtain for a second this week i was officially diagnosed with adhd <laughs> on oh, monday really yeah, so I have an official diagnosis now, so I'm no longer self-diagnosed. I've I've sort of recognized it in myself for like the last three or four years, but um, but finally, like, sort of bit the bullet, got the assessment, and have mm-hmm. like, and I'm officially diagnosed. One of the things that I have discovered in this journey of of you know like uncovering this part of myself um, is that I my brain the one of the reasons why i have conflict with people is because my brain is literally not doing the things that other people's brains do right and and because we only live inside our own flesh mech i i you know walking (laughs) around interacting with the world and trying to understand other people but never truly being able to right like you see things from your own point of view obi-wan says it right um it's it, it it has been only in the last i think five years that i've truly understood that some people don't 
they have no compulsion to engage with the things that they consume. They have, they have absolutely zero They're like their brain just is not wired. And this is not a judgment, right? This is, this is just a statement of fact that like some people just want to watch the show and then walk away. And so those people, I think expect to be told exactly what's happening. Mm. Whereas I think Dave is a lot more like you and I, uh, and, and, and wants to explore and delve. And I mean, like, I think that most creatives are going to be in this way, right? Like we are not creative. Listen, I know that you will support me on this, Joe. I would not choose this life. (laughs) Right. It's so hard. It's so much harder than it needs to be. I look at people who like, 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 you know, like finance bros who can just like exist and make money and they just do their job to make money. And that's good enough for them. They don't need a deeper meaning. They don't need to move people with what they do. They don't need to affect the world in any meaningful way. They just want to accumulate wealth. That's it. That's all they want to do. That is a judgment. I uh, uh, those <laughs> those those dudes suck. Um, that is the problem with the world. But guys like you and I <laughs> exist to counter that force in the world. And but like but also like I wouldn't choose it. I wouldn't choose being a creative. There is something wrong with us, right? (laughs) There is something, there is a problem that we're like, you know, what's more important than surviving drawing lightsabers. (laughs) How does that make any sense? There's something wrong with us, right? I don't have an answer. No, exactly. And, and and like, but, but like, you know, like, but this is true. This is true about us is that like, I will actually sacrifice my well being in order to finish this piece of art that like five people are going to care about, but I know that those five people are really going to like it. So Mm. I'm going to do it, you know, like, cause I have to, because I have a thing inside me that I need to get out. Dave is the same way. He's got stuff inside him that needs to get out, but Dave is a troll of the highest order. And so one of the ways that he does that is by teasing us with things. So, so it makes for really, really good storytelling, really compelling stuff. Because even this week, as we got so many answers, we are now left with so many more questions about what happens next. Mm. Right. Cause it's like, that's where Ezra is. This is how they got, this is why they ended up where they ended up. All of it. Like, the way that he took all of these threads, he took threads of night sisters that we weren't even asking about. He took threads about the pergil and he took the threads about like, why are the, why is the map pointing directly to this place? And it's like, he tied it all together. The map points to the home world of the night sisters. The reason why the pergil go there and why they would take Thrawn and Ezra and the chimera there is because it is their ancient migratory, like, I, I graveyard, right? Like this is where they go to die. So the, like, it's just, it's, it's just where they go. It's just part of their migratory pattern. What does that have to do with the night sisters? Well, that's how the night sisters got from that galaxy to our galaxy. All of that, all, all of those threads are now tied in a nice tidy bow. Meanwhile, he's like, Hey, you know, that weird Jedi guy that I just introduced and his weird Jedi apprentice, they're kind of dark Jedi, but they're kind of, they're not Sith, but they're also not Jedi, but they're something else. (laughs) Um, He says that there's a power here. David, what power? What power? (laughs) What do you, but what do you mean? But what do you mean, Dave? What do you mean? What power? He's going to do it, but better. What does that mean? (laughs) What does Balin mean when he says these things? And she's like, power like Thrawn has? No, that power's fleeting. We're going to do something that's going to last forever. We're going to change the galaxy. What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about, Balin? You need to please <clears throat> use your big boy words and tell us what you're talking about. And then he's like, we're going to team up with these nomads. And I'm just like, everything about this is perfect. And then we're just also like, Hey, look at these little turtle shell crab people. Why? 
I don't know, just because like, because if Ezra's stuck on a planet, you got to give him, you have to give him some underdogs to protect. Dude, that's right out of the prequels. Those guys, I love them. I, it just like, when I say to you that Dave gets Star Wars, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> is that it's like Night Sisters, Purgle Graveyard, Balin's weird, vague ruminations, these awesome nomad i i i what are they called i she called them something else i can't remember but like the like the pillaging the the wasteland or whatever all of that super cool edgelord star wars stuff right all of it's uh, great all of it's night great. troopers too let's not leave them out oh my god we haven't even talked about enoch and the night troopers <laughs> and, but then he's like but then he's like don't worry guys don't worry the howler i know it looks scary it is a big old sweetie. It is adorable. <laughs> and by the end of this episode, you will die for this creature. <laughs> you will sacrifice yourself to protect this precious boy. And then, and then as if that wasn't good enough, these little, these little mans, these little blue mans in their dapper little outfits, their I'm little, friends. their little fantasy crab, turtle outfits joe they have little outfits i know i just like i can't i can't put into words <laughs> how joyful it makes me it just it just is exactly you and I are you and I have started working on a project and 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 I got sidetracked the last couple of weeks I'm job hunting and stuff so I got a little sidetracked and I haven't I haven't put as much time into it as I want to but I, in the next couple of weeks I'm going to get back on it and start putting more time into it you and I are working on a project I'm just going to tease it a little bit for everybody and it's we're going to we are going to craft our own world right mm. for this thing and to do like this is what I want like yeah. what what Dave accomplished in this episode is the dream right and you and i doing this this thing is is born out of of uh, the, out of that desire for us to be like like let's make something new and fun that brings joy right like that's mm -hmm. like and dave he just like he does he delivers it and this is the other reason why I think you and I engage with star Wars is that like something like that, something as simple as these goofy little, some people are calling them turtles, but I, I looked at them as like, that's, that's obviously like a hermit crab, right? Like that's, yeah, that's to that's me, like they, on. they got the little eye stalks and whatever, but these little crab guys, I like, like that's like, that's exactly like that's just the goal. It's just the goal. Just just yeah. to create something that is just instantly you're just in love with it, right? Yeah. And it's these little yeah. touches about it. It's these little things. Like that's it just it it gets it it invigorates us to now go off and create our own stuff and to like and 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 that's the like that is that is the best possible thing that a piece of art can do is to inspire another artist to just go like, just go, just go, go do something. <laughs> right. Just go create. Um, and it just, it just, it's, it's, he's just enabling our idiotic, terrible behavior. But <laughs> I, I, man, it, it is so difficult. It is so difficult to express how, how, happy this episode made me. And like I said, coming off of last week, where it was like, oh my god, everything we've been asking for since they started doing these live action Star Wars shows, here it is. Here's here's Ahsoka and Anakin in their Clone Wars gear. I I in live action. It's Hayden. It's all of it. It's just oh my god, this is so great. This is so perfect. And then to come back the next week and be like, and here's everything you didn't ask for, <laughs> right? Like, here's everything you didn't know that you actually, that you actually deeply wanted inside your soul. Here it is. Um, and it just, I think what it comes down to is that, is that in its purest form, as much as Dave is the heir to George, he is also one of us. Mm. And so he knows exactly what, 
is going to work. And this, I, I wish that I could get people to understand that star Wars rebels is just this. It's just all of this, right? Like these little crab guys, uh, puffer pigs, same thing, same thing. (laughs) Right. I mean, purgles, right? Like all of it, like Dave, just like once he was able to do his own thing and tell his own story and, and add his own stuff to the, to the star Wars galaxy, um, like like without George, right? Like with like once the training wheels were kind of off, um, he went to such weird places, and <laughs> and and it's what I love about his Star Wars storytelling because this the weird stuff is what invigorates me the most about Star Wars, right? Like, because you can do, you can do Star Wars without the weird, right? Mm. Um. And, and you end up with things like Battlestar Galactica, which for all accounts are very good, right? But there is something about, or or you can do something that's a little bit like too much of the weird and you, and not, I shouldn't say too much. You lean into the weird and the weird is the focus instead of the, instead of the characters or the sci-fi and you end up <laughs> with Doom, right? Like, which, mm. which I also love. I mean, like, I also, like, I can't wait for part two, but I, I, yeah, but like Star Wars is just like it just lives in this exact perfect spot for me with like these little these little robot guys and and these little these little droids uh, uh, and these little crabs and these little just like it's all the little guys, man. It's all the little guys and some of the little guys are are space whales and they're gigantic, but they're still little guys if that makes sense. I hope mm. that that makes sense. But like but it is it is literally I think the thing that makes star Wars, star Wars is the little guys. I want to be really clear, not little guys, L I L apostrophe space G U I S. Okay. Little guys, they have to be little guys. And the reason why I say that is because the whole flipping thing starts with a little guy. It starts with a little guy. His name's R2 D2 and he's the main character (laughs) of the saga, right? Like, like you got, you have to have a little guy in order to have a star war and that's you know what like that's what's wrong with andor is that our little guy in star in andor he's just not in enough of it he's just not in enough of it and he's a little bit too sad he's i just wanted him to be a happier little guy if he was a happier little guy i think that show would be a little bit better that's <laughs> i i like i think i've just i i have done it i've connected the dots I like I I've I've figured out what's wrong with Andor and how to fix it is that you just need to make that little guy just a little bit because because Rogue One has a little guy as well he's just he's the, he's a very tall skinny little guy but he is a little guy and that that is K two S O right um he, but he's just he's a very he's a very weird little guy he's a very like sarcastic uh, difficult to deal with little guy. <laughs> But he is a little guy by definition of what a little guy is, which if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you need to do some internet research. Uh, you need to do some, you need to do your own research, which means Google, Google up little guy. I think, I think, I think you'll be happy with the results. Um, but that's what a star Wars needs to be. And this star Wars is full of little guys. It's just, it's just, it's chock full of them. Cause who Yang is, is, a very uh he he's he's a he's a very stuffy little guy but he is a little guy and uh ezra himself is a little guy i want to be super clear about that (laughs) ezra is a little guy and it's like the whole quest is to find a little guy and what is he doing he's hanging out with a bunch of little guys and you need to use the little guys to get to him because you gotta get on the purgles and uh even like the the howler he's a little guy he's a he's a big he's a big wolf lizard that you get to ride but but on the inside he's a little guy just like Chewbacca is a seven foot tall little guy, <laughs> right? Like this is what Star Wars is all about. This is why Mando like we get to the end of that first episode of Mandalorian and I'm like this show looks like it'll be pretty good. I guess I don't know if I want a Boba Fett show. He's not even actually Boba Fett, but whatever. I I get this is what everybody's asking for. You get to the end of that episode and it's like no no this is about this is about dollar store boba fett and his little guy that's what the show's about and then the rest of the show is just about that and you're like okay and then they bring back boba fett and what did they do to boba fett they actually kind of turned boba fett into a little guy that's what they did to boba fett and then everybody gets mad at that they did that to boba fett 
except for me, except for me, because this is all I'm here for. And it's like I I've had a revelation on this episode, Joe. I've had an epiphany on this episode that the right. whole reason I'm into Star Wars is for the little guys. And if you can turn <laughs> Boba Fett from an edge lord into a little guy, then I'm on board. Which is what they did to Darth Maul. They turned Darth. They took Darth Maul. And they were like, <laughs> Darth Maul is so cool. And they're like, What if Darth Maul is just like really, really in his feelings all the time? Mm-hmm. Like, what if Darth Maul is just like he's got the dark side so bad that he just can't help it, and he's just in love with Obi Wan Kenobi, and he just wants to kiss him, but he doesn't understand that he just wants to kiss him, and so that's why he's so so mad because it's like i just want to kiss you but i'm not allowed to because i'm a i'm a dark side and you're a light side and so i'm not allowed to kiss you and then you cut me in half which made me very upset but all i want to do is kiss you and so what does he do he kills his girlfriend it's just it's that's such little guy behavior you guys i don't (laughs) i don't think i'm making any sense whatsoever except i'm i'm kind of following are you following me I'm, i'm with you it's it's it is um i'm gonna connect this into the episode of uh perfect 10 that we just released this is why i like clive so much because clive <laughs> little guy because clive is just a little guy on the inside right and it comes out and he's and he cries all the time he cries so much and it just makes me happy and i think what it is is that is because i'm just a little guy all right. Like, that's the truth of it is that that's I and I just want to I just want that to be OK. I want everybody to be OK with that fact is that like I'm just a little guy. That's it. I'm not a big manly man and I don't want to be a big manly man. I don't need to be a big manly man. I just want to be a little guy and just be happy about it. So uh, and that's why if you look at all of my drawings, I just turn everybody into little guys. <laughs> this has been the best therapy session ever, Joe. I I am now going to be quiet. Stop talking about little guys. <laughs> I'm going to let you talk about the thing that you love about I, Star Wars so I much. I don't which know is, where to start from that, man. <laughs> give me, okay, I'm going to say one name, and then I'm going to let you go off, because right, I cool. think that I think that it'll work. Enoch. Okay, t- yeah. <laughs> tell, me, tell me why this character is working so well, because he is. I don't know, man. I don't know the answer he's, to that. He's I, not a little guy. He, he is, is not, not a little guy, guy at he's all. Really not. He is a, first of all, let's just back up a second. Mm-hmm. The fact that we've got these, I think, clearly undead stormtrooper guys who yeah. are, I imagine, one of the reasons that Grand Admiral Thrawn is thanking the Night Sisters for their help and support. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I think it runs deeper than that because they've been in communication a lot. And it's, it seems that they're able to sense stuff through their dark magic force abilities of how things are going to go. And, and I, I, I can't remember if they said the plan or the, the threat of fate or something like that. Um, some kind of thing. They're getting these witchly Mac, Macbeth premonitions and they're able to see parts of the future, but not everything. But regardless of that, uh, they are involved in uh thrawn's plans to escape this galaxy and return to the one that we know um it's a lot of stormtroopers that were aboard that star destroyer and it sure would be difficult probably feeding that many stormtroopers and and not having to conserve uh uh, supplies and and rations and all that stuff and then there's also the um you know we didn't really talk about this connection earlier on in the season. Everybody was into this dude with a weird voice named Marek or Marak or whatever we were, or whatever mm-hmm, the correct mm-hmm. pronunciation is. He had a strange voice turned out to be uh, a whole big nothing burger, but there's, as we always like to say, Dave doesn't do these things for no reason. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of speculated back then, okay, probably nice sister magic. And now we have these guys who, uh, are looking a little worse for wear uh, in these wrapped up kind of stormtrooper, beaten up stormtrooper, repaired uh, armor, uh, plates and gauntlets and helmets and all that stuff. Um, being a little unsettling, right? Like their <laughs> body language is, is just like, these guys are not stormtroopers we've seen before. And it's, I don't think it's a discipline thing. I don't think it's a matter of, well, Grand Admiral Thrawn saved us, so we're going to be 
completely loyal to. I think they are undead, ghostly slaves to the Night Sisters and to Thrawn's cause. Um, and then, of course, at the front of the guard is Captain Enoch, who is maybe <laughs> the coolest looking trooper to come out of Star Wars uh, since Captain Rex, I think, uh, it would be my feelings on the matter. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a weird dude with a cool voice, and, I mean, we don't know a ton about him, but, uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, I, I, I had messaged you the other night that, um, you know, I, I, I googled what Enoch was, because at first I thought Enoch was, like, a, just, like, a noun for something that, oh, maybe this sounds like a word that I'm just unfamiliar with, but apparently, Mm -hmm. uh, Enoch is a, uh, biblical and Hebrew character in the old testament uh who this dude was like he lived 365 years like oh okay i wonder if if this there's a little hint going on with (laughs) this guy is just this immortal undead character or like something unnatural is going on and that's that's not a stretch to say considering they're aligned with these night sisters who are clearly using these to us unnatural um you know, uh, connections to the force or, or whatever. So I, man, I, I know I get hung up on a lot of silly things, but I want so much to know more about these guys and what yeah. their deal is. And like, even if it really is just like as simple as, as I described it, yeah, they're just undead stormtroopers. Cool. Tell me that because I want to know everything about these guys. Like I, I think they're super cool. Um, I have a question for you regarding these guys because, yeah. you know, I always watch with subtitles. That's just like, I just like doing that because for me, like my hearing isn't wonderful. Um, so I like to catch, like if I don't have subtitles on, I will miss that transition where things go from to me very, very, very loud and, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. noise and music and whatever. And then all of a sudden the scene's quiet, like those abrupt changes for me, I miss a lot of that dialogue. Um, so I always watch with subtitles and Disney plus has subtitles where they actually, you know, I mentioned before, uh, I don't remember if we were recording or not, but uh, the, the night troopers, it actually yeah. calls them night troopers in the subtitles. And what subtitles do very often, especially um, for, uh, you know, shows like this, if there's chanting in a in the soundtrack, it doesn't necessarily uh, separate what we're hearing versus what the characters are hearing. So we know that there's chanting uh, these these there's chanting of Thrawn. The word Thrawn is being chanted in this like weird, like unsettling way. And like, it doesn't to me look like the troopers were actually chanting because they're not moving, right? They're completely still, but they're still maybe yelling. Or is that chant part of the soundtrack and these characters are not actually hearing these chants. So I was like a little confused by that. But, like, the fact that these troopers are so weird and unsettling, it almost wouldn't be, like, that out of place that, like, yeah, they're just not moving and they're chanting and, like, there's no, even though they're hyping up Thrawn, there's, like, this, like, unnatural side of, like, their body language just being completely just, like, uh, uh, disciplines, right? Because they're all in formation and they're all, and Enoch, I think, um issue some commands like uh attention and and march and like stuff like that so like there's i don't want to call it a disconnect but it's like weird like it's just like this weird vibe that's going on with these guys and i want to know their deal so badly and you know i i think for me it's a difference of like oh it's stupid why don't we know these answers for me it's just like oh oh my god i can't wait to see next week and like yeah it's it's I like not getting all the answers because like you said, like now we get to break it down and we get to speculate and you and I have this, like we get more out of it, like yeah. getting to sit down and ask questions and, and, and speculate and, and just like, 
you know, our imaginations are going crazy. And even if we don't get the answers that we think we're going to get, the answers that we get are still, I feel, are going to be satisfying, even if they're not like everything. It'll still be like, we're going to get what we need to get, right? Like the story is going to be told. Everything we're going to need out of the story is going to be given to us. And the rest of us is either going to be up to us to enjoy and speculate and, and like exercise that creative imagination to fill in those answers or it's just a detail that's not that important and it's just like fun to make up your own answers and then you know it's, it's inconsequential right like mm -hmm. it, it's not going to impede our enjoyment of the uh of the story that's being told it's crazy how star wars has just like always been you know obviously it's this big cultural phenomenon but it's also this there's like this social aspect to it that a lot of this pop culture stuff is doing now but i think star wars is such a i don't know if pioneer is the right word because i feel like ever since episode four came out and then obviously it wasn't episode it wasn't called episode four at the time but as soon as like a sequel became a thing like people's imaginations were crazy like i'm sure you've seen this newspaper article of like there's a screenshot of uh, Darth Vader talking to Boba Fett on Bespin while Han Solo is being tortured inside the uh, the the little Bespin torture chamber yeah. room. Um, and the the speculation in the newspaper is like, if Boba Fett really is is Skywalker Senior, he's going to have to mask his connection to the Force so that Force privy Darth Vader doesn't sense him and and you know figure out his his true identity, like. Yeah. We've always been speculating this and it's always been this fun social aspect of things that people just want to get together and be excited about Star Wars and, and talk about Star Wars. And it's like this, it's this extra, you know, layer and, and, you know, like you said, we watch it and we get our enjoyment out of it. And for a lot of people, that's it. And that's enough. But like for the fandom, it's, it's more than that, right? Like it's, it, it gives you the gift in the moment and then it gives you that after gift of, well, now you get to go have fun with your friends about this yeah. too. So that's what well, Enoch's doing for me right now, man. Like I'm so pumped yeah. about those guys. It's not even funny. And I want to draw them. So like it's, I'm getting my, my yaya's out as a Star Wars fan. I'm going to get my yaya's out as a, as a, as an artist. Like I'm just like, I'm, e I'm eating the show up, man. Oh yeah. my God. Um, well, and, and like this, this is why I say like Dave's one of us and he understands all everything that you just said. He understands and he lives yeah. it because naming this character Enoch, um, you are right to look into it. So I'll let, 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 let me further blow everybody's minds about, about the name Enoch and a little bit <laughs> of, uh, of, of we'll call it Judeo Christian, but it's mostly Jewish history. I, I guess the Christians intersect at a certain point uh, that'll mm. become clear. So the book of Enoch is an apocryphal chapter of the Bible. Um, it's uh, it, it, it was omitted. It was omitted <laughs> by the Catholics. Okay. Um, the reason why the book of Enoch is omitted by the Catholics is because uh, the book of Enoch deals uh, uh, more than any other part of the Bible with angels. Uh, and, yeah. um, there is a uh, sect. I don't know, like just sort of like a. It's it's like um um oh uh, like is it Kabbalah? Is that the thing? That's like that's like Jude. It's I think it's Kabbalah. That's uh, like a the sort of like Jew Jewish mysticism, right? So there's a there's a there's a gr a group within Judaism. It it doesn't really exist anymore because of the fact that this stuff has sort of been wiped. Um, it's very difficult to, to find. So, I mean, it's probably not anymore because of the internet, but at, at a certain point in history, it was very difficult to, to learn more about the book of Enoch and about Enoch and, 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 uh, and, and about that stuff. So there's a, there is a set of beliefs within Judaism and within, you know, some sort of like weird Christian offshoots, uh, um, that, that refers to Enochian magic and Enochian magic is literally. Um, so, you know, how we, this is, this is a thing where it's like, it's all going to start to make sense to people. 
yeah. you draw a pentagram on the ground and you put three sure. drops of blood and there's yeah. candles around it and it summons a demon, right? Okay, sure. So demons are fallen angels, right? Mm-hmm. If you can summon a demon, then it stands to reason that you can also summon an angel, okay. right? So in Nokian magic, which is like considered to be way, way outside of like, again, the the Catholic church basically like said, get that out of the Bible. Like, like, <laughs> because what it does is it, is it, is it, yeah, um, from a, from a theological standpoint, it, it imbues power on individual humans and the Catholic church wanted very much for there to be one person with power. And that was sure. the Pope. Yeah. Um, that remains the Pope and the Pope is the only one who can talk to God. But if you had access to Enochian magic and ritual, then you would be able to uh, summon and invoke angelic powers. And by virtue of that, you would basically have a, a, a pathway to speaking with God. Now, if you f- follow through further in christianity and you actually listen to what jesus says he says none of this is necessary that's the whole reason that he came down to earth was to be a human and be like i'll i'll intercede on your behalf all you got to do is pray to talk to god that's it um but this is ancient jewish mythology right so like in the same way that like we, we burn an offering to God in order to, you know, repent for certain behaviors and that sort of thing, being unclean. Right. That's, that's one of the most common is, Oh, I, I, I touched something unclean. I, I, I touched a pig or a dog. Right. <laughs> this is a, again, these are thousands of years old. These, these ideologies. Mm. Um, so you burn an offering and that sort of thing. Like they, they had rituals and, um, and, uh, symbols and that sort of thing to summon angels in order to in order to do certain things right mm-hmm. now what are those certain things it's mostly to do with crops and harvest <laughs> right it's a, <laughs> it, very similar to pagan stuff another reason why this stuff is sort of omitted from from the bible and and removed it's these it's not like the book of enoch was the instructions the the, the right. book of enoch has stuff that refers to these sorts of things. And then these traditions had been passed down orally and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it did, but this part, this is a part of Judeo Christian history and mythology that is largely erased because it doesn't, um, it doesn't gel with what, um, with what Protestant and Catholic belief structures of Christianity want you to believe. Right. So Dave using Enoch, I think is very, very interesting because it's obviously tied into the night sisters, the night sisters potentially being a portion of Jedi history that's been removed. Right. I, I, it's this thing of like, whenever the Jedi encounter the night sisters, you get you get a thing of like you get a Jedi talking the way that I just talked about all this Enoch stuff of like yeah okay so like this used to be part like they yeah they connect to the Force but not in the same way that we do. The explanation is always like, uh, well they're in a they're an illegitimate aspect of the Force right like that's how like they, anytime like if if you were to like go to Obi Wan or or Yoda and talk to them about a Night Sister they'd be like, well okay yeah so technically they connect to the Force but they don't connect to the Force in the same way that a Jedi does wink wink the right way, I uh, you know like like it's it it's very it's so similar. Yeah. Of like, it's like <laughs> what, what the book of Enoch is, is apocrypha, which means that it's something that the Catholic church doesn't want you to know about. Right. There's a bunch, there are several books that are apocryphal that, that, that were removed from the Bible. Right. And mostly from the old Testament, mostly because it's like contextually, it doesn't fit the narrative of Christ. Right. So um, this is one of the reasons why when I hear uh, fundamental fundamentalist Christians, going off about like, well, this is what it says in the Bible. It's like, well, the Bible's not a complete text. So you don't even understand what you're talking about. Even if you did understand what you're talking about, you still don't understand what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, uh, yeah. So, so like invoking the name of Enoch in reference to the night troopers 
to me is Dave going like, you have questions and there are answers. And if you, if you just look at this, mm, here's the answers. So yeah, like those are obviously, they are obviously zombie stormtroopers. Yeah. That's, and if you had told me that in, in the, 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 the year of our Lord George Lucas, 2023, <laughs> that, that we would be getting zombie stormtroopers in a show about Ahsoka that is actually starring Sabine Wren that is about getting Ezra back that we would get zombie stormtroopers, right? That that would be a major <laughs> part of that. I would have been like, that's dumb. You're dumb. And I hate that you said that to me, but, <laughs> but then we get it. And I'm like, no, wait, it's perfect. This is perfect. And I love everything about it. I, I would like to kiss Dave Filoni on the mouth. Um, yeah, it's just like, it is just, it is the fact again, that like, th this is, this is a thread tied to a clone wars storyline, right? That we saw zombie night sisters during the clone wars. And then it was like, okay, so here's Merak. And it's like this inquisitor, what is an inquisitor doing? this long after a new hope right because basically like we're, we're sort of led to believe that by the time that we hit a new hope that the inquisitors are mostly gone right um that and 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 i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and posit that cal kestis has a lot to do with that um mm -hmm. and that i i you know like there's a little bit in the obi-wan story that that sort of like gets into that i i would love to see reva and cal <laughs> teaming up and like just obliterating what's left i actually you know what that's not even that's not even what i want to see the inquisitor the inquisitorius has to come to an end it doesn't need to be destroyed in order to come to an end it just has to be stopped and mm -hmm. the best way to stop it is to transform it into something else and so i would love to see reva and cal and marin redeem the rest of the Inquisitorius take them away to where to, to, to Tantalor and, uh, and for there to be like a bunch of like reborn Jedi on Tantalor. And that that's like the whole deal on Tantalor is that like, yeah, Luke wasn't the first one to accomplish this with Vader. Like this has actually been happening for a long time. Um, and for Tantalor to then become like the place that like when somebody falls to the dark side, this is where we can send them to, um, make penance right it becomes like a pilgrimage and then and then and then and then listen joe listen mm -hmm. and then when you bring ben solo back uh, he's got to go to tantalor he has uh, to go to tantalor in order to cleanse and come and like be fully you know reborn as as ben solo it's just it's so perfect so perfect what i've done there is i've done what dave does with his stories i just took like four threads and i just tied them all together into one great story how satisfying would that be for someone who's watched obi-wan kenobi played the jedi games and watched the sequel trilogy and it's like how are you gonna bring back kylo ren right like he's a bad guy what are you gonna do you're gonna just bring him back to life even though he sacrificed himself blah blah blah, blah. it's like yeah yeah yeah, I am. I would. I will. Yes. I'm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Any because other he dumb should questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, like these, like the night troopers are such a prime example of that type of storytelling. And this is why, this is why Dave has the reputation that he has is like, he fixed the prequels. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, well, it wasn't just Dave. George was there writing stories alongside them. Right. Like he was, he was breaking the stories and telling them we're going to bring back Darth Maul and he's got a brother. Um, and all of this stuff right but but like dave gets a lot of the credit for it but and i and i do think that that is warranted i do think that's justified because as he continues you know like he just he just he just keeps telling more stories and these stories just keep like i just it there is a satisfaction from this show that has not been in the other star Wars shows. I've had a really good time with all of the other star Wars shows. And, and then like Andor is really good and makes me anxious, but uh, I, but like overall, like there hasn't been a star Wars show that I've been like, this shouldn't have existed. Right. They're all, they are all worthwhile. They all have worthwhile pieces of story. Some of the execution, it leaves a little bit to be desired. Book of Boba Fett being probably the most obvious 
of those uh, of those examples. But this show is Star Wars Rebels with all of the chaff removed. Like it is just it is just the pure like what was the best things about Star Wars Rebels. That's what this show is. I mm. cannot believe how good this show is and that we cannot effusively loudly proclaim it because of this damn dual strike that's going on right yeah, now. I, it suck. just it kills me <laughs> that I cannot be talking with the wider Star Wars audience about all of this stuff right now. I am so grateful that you and I have this opportunity to do it and to get this out. And obviously, you know, like we've, we've talked about, we talk one on one with all sorts of people about this stuff. But, but like you said, like there is an aspect of Star Wars, this communal thing, and it is still kind of happening because it's like the episode goes up and then everybody is like, burp, burp. like everybody kind of like sends up their signal flare, but we're all kind of, it's all coded messages and we're all very like, you know, sending our fulcrum transmissions back and forth um of like okay yeah like like let's all acknowledge for a second good good episode good episode dave well done i uh, but let's also not talk about this too much and not be explicit because you know uh, pay your actors and writers right so <laughs> it's a yeah it's a it's a it's a high wire act and it's difficult balancing it but um we only have two episodes left we only have two episodes left joe <laughs> Suck. This is gonna be such a long wait for the next thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and even longer because of again, like like the writer strike. Well, yeah, that's what I, what I mean. Is is it's, yeah it's is brutal. is making it even worse. So it's like, but but still, do what you got to do, guys. Get paid. Don't oh, matter. absolutely right. It's not. Don't matter. Yeah, get paid. It's. At any point that we are complaining about the strike, we are not yeah. complaining about the people who are striking. They are striking for legitimate and justified mm -hmm. reasons. When we complain about it, we are complaining about the executives who are prolonging yes. this whole situation absolutely. with their absolutely asinine behavior. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's my way of getting a swear in there without actually <laughs> swearing because that's not a swear word. But uh, but that is how they are behaving. So, um Although I don't know if you believe the the rumors from yesterday, they the WGA is negotiating at the moment. So okay. hopefully that's true. Hopefully that's the case. And then the actors can get a deal uh, uh, and everybody can be happy and we can go back to making cool stuff. But in a world where people are actually getting paid appropriately to do so. Uh, I think that's it. I think we did it. We barely, we kind of barely talked about Thrawn, but I think that the thing about that is that like he was just perfect. Yeah, they, what what are we gonna do? <laughs> like, what's there like, to critique? There's there's nothing there. There is it. no more to expound upon than like yeah, Lars is Thrawn and he's perfect and uh, he ties into all that stuff that we're talking about. I don't know. There's like he's got plans. He's got plans. I uh, but he's Thrawn. He's always got plans. He's perfect. He's perfect. I uh, yeah fantastic episode fantastic show i cannot wait for next week tuesday can't come fast enough um, it's it's bittersweet man because like oh, the sooner it comes the sooner it's over yeah but uh but that is the that, that is the joy of these things here's the i will i will abate that uh, just just a modicum with this with this one piece as soon as we're done ahsoka we roll right into loki season two so you know like I'm I'm gonna be fine. I'll be fine because I will switch <laughs> over from one mode into the other. I I yeah, cause cause season one of Loki was some of the best Marvel that we've gotten, TV or otherwise. Um, so I can't wait for season two. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we'll just 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 replace one vice with another. Um, but I. Uh, Cool. That's it for this episode. Thank you once again, Joe, for joining me and talking about the Star War. Uh, and uh, and thank you, everybody, for listening. 
and uh, we'll be back. Listen, I it's, I don't even know how to end an episode of this podcast because it's like, we'll be back next week. I mean, like Joe and I will be back next week. But for you guys, <laughs> it's, it's like probably next. right Auto. now. You can Auto just go play. ahead. Yeah, <laughs> just keep going. Um, so uh, enjoy. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting us over at patreon.com slash thunderquack and all of that stuff. Uh, and uh, And we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to Thunder Quack Force Perspectives. Our opening theme is composed for us by Christy Carew. Follow Force Perspectives on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at ForcePOV. And join us on Discord at thunderquack.com discord. Support the show by visiting us at patreon.com thunderquack to get early access to episodes. Leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast service, or buy merch at store.thunderquack.com. Force Perspectives is a part of the Thunderquack Podcast Network.